Good morning, Heritage Fellowship family and friends. Thank you for worshiping with us on this Communion Sunday. Each time we take communion, we reflect on 1 Corinthians 11 and 24, which quotes Jesus as saying, take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Although we'll never walk the path that he did, we can relate to that feeling of being spiritually, emotionally, and physically broken. To be broken means reduced to fragments, torn, out of working order, changing direction abruptly. As we deal with the ongoing pandemic, the loss of loved ones, financial challenges, and political unrest, our lives have abruptly changed direction, and we are indeed out of working order. A trick of the enemy is to make us feel like nobody understands, like we're in this alone. But God is the peace, restoration, and hope we need. Church, now more than ever, we must hold on to our faith and hold on to each other. Our ministerial staff and lay leaders are here to pray for and with you and support you in this time. Please email us at lovelifts at heritagereston.org. We are here and we pray that today's message will pull you close so you may feel God's love all around you. Amen. Let's stay connected. Each week during our virtual worship experience, you can interact with us at 7.45 a.m. on YouTube live chat and at 10.45 a.m. during the Facebook watch party. Also, visit our website, heritagereston.org, for previous messages and other important announcements. Heritage, it is time to bless the Lord with our tithes and offerings. We are all aware of the economic strain being felt across the world, and we pray diligently for the families negatively impacted. But, thanks be to God, Many of us have been blessed to retain our jobs, even see promotion and increase in this time. Luke 12, 48 declares that for everyone to whom much is given, much from them will be required. In these unprecedented times, we pray that you will search your hearts and give as the Spirit leads. There are multiple ways to give. On our homepage, click Give in the upper right-hand corner and use the Secure Give app. Or text to give by sending love lifts and your dollar amount to 703-337-3347. You may also give through automated banking and by mailing your check to the church. We thank you in advance for your gifts of love. Heritage, did you know that there are approximately 20,000 children in Fairfax and another 10,000 in Loudoun living in households at risk of hunger? Here's the thing. The face of hunger doesn't look like poverty. More than half of these families don't qualify for government assistance. Hunger looks like us. It's our neighbors, our friends and coworkers, and they need our help. Let's follow the example of the church in Acts 2 and 45 and give to those who have need. Just $50 will provide food for two families. Our goal is to feed at least 500 families. Please search your hearts and wallets and give to this worthy cause. We thank you for your support. It's a great Sunday. We gather together on the first Sunday of the month to observe the Lord's table as we celebrate Holy Communion. So listen, what I need you to do right now is to get ready for communion that we might enjoy it together as one body in Christ. Get your bread, get your crackers, get your grape juice, get whatever your elements are and come on, let's gather together. Let's get ready to worship. All right, you guys, you ready? Listen, y'all, this has been a blessed day in the Lord. We've come out and celebrated and loved thoroughly on our young people and our graduates. It takes so many hands to, to be able to do the work that we've done, but we would have never made it had it not have been for the Lord who was on our side and the faithful volunteers that have just thoroughly loved and supported our young people in this season. As pastor, I am pastorally proud to be a part of Heritage Fellowship Church and for the love that we've shared one with another. And we are so excited not only to see our graduates, but to see our church family. Today was a blessing was unto a us. Blessing. We miss you all. We miss you all. And sometimes when we have projects like the SHARE program and we are serving the community, we also want to see 
our church family. So please be sure to connect with us, connect with us on Bible study, connect with us on the morning daily prayer. We are here to listen, to love, and to grow together. Come on, y'all, let's do it as a family. We're one family in Jesus' name. We love you with the love of the Lord. Until we see you next time. Congratulations, 2020! You did it! You did it! Now, a selection from our praise team. In the midst of everything we're going through, there's no need to worry because God is holding us in the palm of His hand. Our lives are all in His hand. You don't have to worry. You don't have to worry. And don't you be afraid. And don't you be afraid. Joy comes in the morning. Joy comes in the morning. Troubles, they don't last Troubles, always. Troubles, they don't last always. There's a friend. Oh, there's a friend in Jesus. He'll wipe your tears away. Who will wipe your tears away? And if your heart is broken, and if your heart is broken, wherever you are, just lift your hand. Just lift your hand. I know that I can make it. Oh, I know that I can make it. I know that I can stand. No matter, no matter. Jesus, I can take it. With Jesus, I can take it. With Him, with Him, I know I can stand. No matter what, no matter what may come my way, my life is in Your hand. So when Your tests and trials, so when Your tests and trials may seem to get you down, they seem to get you down. And all your friends and loved ones and all your friends and loved ones are nowhere to be found are nowhere to oh remember, be remember found. there's a friend in Jesus remember there's a friend in Jesus he'll wipe every tear away he'll wipe your tears away and if your heart is broken and if your heart is broken come on and lift your hands just lift your hands oh, oh I know Welcome to worship. We have come into his house, gathered in his name to worship Christ the Lord. I don't know what this week has meant to you, but we come to lay aside every weight that we might worship Christ the Lord. So come on, family. Come on, friends. Let's get in our place of worship. Let's connect together. Let's go to God in prayer. Our Father and our God, holy is your name in all the earth. 
Angels bow down before you. Heaven and earth adore you. And we, your creation, God, call out to you on this morning just to decry, holy is your name. Holy is your name, Hosanna. And we give you thanks, Lord Jesus, for the gift of life, for the strength of life, for allowing us to gather one more time in worship. So God, won't you do what only you are able to do? Push beyond our limitations. Pull up right next to us wherever we are in our homes or in our offices. And Lord, break forth the bread of life. Lord, there's somebody desiring to, to hear from you this morning. There's somebody, oh God, that, that needs you to speak a right now word in the middle of their circumstance. So speak, Lord, for your servants are listening. This is our prayer in faith in Jesus' name. Let everyone say amen. Amen. I'm excited to come before you on this morning. There is a word from the Lord. I invite your attention to the 137th Psalm. The 137th Psalm. When you find the 137th Psalm, join in with me as we read together verses 1 through 4. 137th Psalm reads like this. By the rivers of Babylon, there we sat down. Yea, we wept when we remembered Zion. We hung our harps upon the willows in the midst of it. For there those who carried us away captive asked of us a song. And those who plundered us requested mirth, saying, Sing us one of those songs of Zion. How shall we sing the Lord's song in a foreign land? I want to hang out this morning in, in that small pericope of scripture under, and tag as the title of this text, I still have a reason to sing. Come on, I don't know what you're going through, but you ought to declare it as your affirmation this morning that in spite of it all, I still have a reason to sing. The Psalter, Israel's songbook, is filled with songs that tell the journey of their story. Songs to be sung in both seasons of celebration and yet even in seasons of despair. To borrow from the Apostle of Motown, the, the Gospel of Stevie Wonder, the Psalter is filled, beloved, with songs in the key of life. I've said it before. If when you open up your Bible, you know no better place to go, you can always find a word when you open up to the Psalms. The, the Psalm, the, the collective songbook of Israel, is filled with songs that can help you no matter the season of life. Psalms like, bless the Lord, O my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. Beloved, that's a song. Save me, O God. For the waters are up to my neck. I, I sink in the deep mire of where there is no standing. I've come into the deep waters where the floods, they, they overflow me. That's, that's the 69th Psalm. It'll rescue you in your time of need. How about this one? Have, have mercy on me, O God, according to thy loving kindness, according to the multitude of thy tender mercies. Purge me with hyssop and I shall be clean. Wash me and I shall be whiter than snow. Here's where you know it. Create in me a clean heart and renew a right spirit within me. That, that's a psalm that'll change your very life. I've come to the conclusion that there's not an experience that we can have in this life. Nothing that we can go through where, where the psalms don't speak to. And as we continue, beloved, to wade these waters of viral pandemic, as we contend with bigotry and racism, as we even grieve in our heart the passing of our own beloved sister Tamara Hamilton, who we celebrated in the drive through on graduation Sunday and on Monday, the Lord called her to be eternally home with him. Beloved, I know that without a shadow of a doubt that this season has taught me, if nothing else, that sometimes it's hard to hang in there with hope when tragedy and trouble seem to stay on your track. But when you find yourself in a place, when you find yourself in a space that you had not imagined, when the enemy has tried to take you captive against your own very will, the Lord sends some, 
Psalm 137 encouragement into your life and into mine to remind me, my brother and my sister, we still have a reason, despite it all, to rejoice. Come, let me pull up next to you on the river banks of, of this text this morning as we sit with the psalmist who puts pen to his pain in order to let the Lord know uh, that I'm going through something that's literally trying to take my song. Have you ever been there? Are you there right now? Let me give you the background to this 137th Psalm. Jerusalem has been captured. The people of Judah are now expelled. There's no joy to be found in this place of pain. And Glenn, that though they're captured, expelled, there's no end to this exile in sight. And to add insult to injury, their captors mock them saying, sing to us some songs. Ah, slow down, hover in that place with me. The captors mock these that have been oppressed, these that have ah, been exiled, and, and they treat this Levitical guild as if they're, they're an ancient, some ancient form of Spotify title or Apple music uh, is saying, sing unto us one of those songs of Zion. Sister Betty, it's in that place of pain, living in the hardship of having lost hope that the psalmist declares, how shall we sing the Lord's song in a strange land? How shall we sing the Lord's song when we're living in a place of captivity? How can we sing the Lord's song when the captors aren't foreign armies, but come as failed public policy, violence and brutality, illness by pandemic and unexpected death? How can we sing the Lord's song? Let me put my finger in that place on this morning ah, to let you know that, that the question is real this morning for those of us that are emotionally broke, for those of us who feel as if sorrow has sabotaged our song, that I don't know about you this morning, but the psalmist asked the question that if, if you and I be honest this morning, we've asked at some point on this journey, how? Can I sing the Lord's song? I don't know where you are this Sunday morning, beloved, but the relevant question for this psalmist living in a place of pain is, is how, God, can I sing? Uh, and I'm mighty glad the psalmist asked the question, but I'm even more excited that, the, that God provides the answer that when you find yourself struggling in what seems like a no-win situation, you've got to be resistant to whatever tries to raid your joy. Take that note this morning. Ah, that when you find yourself in a place of question, when you find yourself without seemingly a good answer, ah, that you've got to be resistant to whatever it is that tries to raid your joy. Follow with me this morning. Hmm. It's, it's the southern kingdom uh, that's delivered and is incapacitated in, uh, in the fight because their captors not only uh, take them from their land, they're holding them hostage from their identity. Come on and get this. The, the very ones taken captive, beloved, represent Judah, which by the virtue of their name in Hebrew, Yehuda, from whence we get the word yada. Uh, literally means praise. Come on, this is going to get good in a minute. That, that Judah, the son of Jacob and Leah, Judah, to whom a tribe within the southern kingdom of Israel is made, Judah uh, has the power to revolt and to resist when Judah remembers the true identity of its name. That when the psalmist pins the second verse of this hymn, a, a few things become apparent that they are so encumbered by their own grief that they hang up their harps on the willow trees. They've been beaten, stripped, plundered into captivity, and as mocked the meaning of their worship, now they've been asked to sing. The psalmist struggles in that fourth verse of the psalm to 
tap into the true identity because they're living through a trauma that has taken away the strength of their name. Don't miss this. The fact that Judah now is in Babylonian captivity, the fact that they're not singing but weeping is a problem. The fact that they've hung up their harps on the willow trees, it's, it's a problem, beloved. Uh, the fact that, that they've taken on the yoke of their oppressors uh, that, is, uh, that has delivered them to a place where they can no longer find their song, beloved, that is a problem. And I dare say, your name and my name might not be found in that 137th Psalm, but you can look back over your life. I can look back over my life and realize that there were some moments where my song was literally snatched out of my soul. That There were some times, beloved, where I couldn't remember the words to sing my praise unto God. That there were some times where it was difficult to muster through what I had to go through. Why? Because I allowed mm, something other than God to take hold of my song. Beloved, that ain't bad enough. Keep on reading. For the psalmist says that after the adversary attacked, after they ransacked everything that they could find, uh, that they turn around and they ask the question, they, they, they make the statement, sing to us one of those songs of Zion. The response to the captors simply was, how can we sing? Can I preach in that place this morning? Don't ever, ah, here it is, I need you to get this. Don't ever let what you think is your captor uh, take captive your worship. Don't ever let what you think is your captor take captive your worship. Somebody, you ought to at least chat amen right now that the challenge of this 137th Psalm uh, is, is that because the Babylonians have beaten uh, Judah into believing that they're dispossessed, that somehow they believe that they're disconnected from the power of God to show up in their now situation. Uh, that the real paradox is that true yada praise uh, shows us that, that, that when I find myself in a place of pain, uh, that I press through my pain in order to give God my praise, that praise shows up when despite what I'm going through, I still have enough conviction in God to open up my mouth and declare the glory of the Lord. That Because this morning, I challenge you in that, because the real proclivity uh, when we're up against a problem is to do like the psalmist and hang up our harps. But here's the encouragement, beloved. The only way to get through pain is to give God your praise. Only way to get through pain isn't staying in pain, but to press through pain in order to give God your praise. I'm not telling you what sounds good this morning. I'm telling you what I know for myself, that the solution to my problems never got better until I pressed through the pain in order to give God his praise. What am I trying to say? You ought to praise ye the Lord. You ought not need a cheerleader this morning. You ought not need for the sun to shine through your window in order to praise ye the Lord. Praise the Lord when your heart feels like it's breaking. Praise the Lord when after all you've been through, you still have strength in God to stand. Praise the Lord when the arrows of attack try to assail and yet God doesn't allow them to pierce your spirit. Praise the Lord as an act of defiance to the situation that you find yourself in to let the Lord know that with Christ Jesus as your strength, you shall not be defeated. You ought to praise the Lord this morning that the captor can only hold you in captivity when you turn over your power of praise. Somebody in here, 
You needed a reminder. I needed a reminder that our spiritual DNA in God is too strong to become discombobulated because of someone trying to be uh, an oppressor, that, that our strength in God is too strong in order to let anything outside of God co-opt the praise that we have that belongs to God. That, that, beloved, what we need most to get us through a moment like now is to remember that God is still worthy of our praise. The psalmist also uh, reminds us that the greatest form of resistance is rooted in what we remember. The greatest form of resistance is rooted in what we still remember. Watch the movement. There's, there's a shift in the psalm. Kelly and Kim, there's a key change in the Psalter. The conversation has shifted from the present plight, from their present plight, to remember there was a God with them in Zion. There's a God that sits by the banks of the rivers in Babylon. There's a God that showed up every step of the way, and there's a God that still is worthy of the praise. That in response to the captor's request, Israel contemplates their current circumstance and is reminded the more that they remember, the more the memory builds up their arsenal as their oppressors try to attack them. That the more they, they, they remember God, the more they build an arsenal in God that is strong enough to stand up no matter how, how hard their oppressors try to oppress them. That praise is the weapon, but memory is the arsenal that allows us to draw deep in God when we find ourselves, beloved, under attack. Ah, the psalmist says that if I forget you, O Jerusalem, let my right hand forget its skill. If I don't remember you, let my tongue cleave to the roof of my mouth. We're, about, we're all about to get help here. Follow me that, that their memory of God isn't tied to the temple. Their memory of God isn't geographically fixed to Jerusalem. The memory of God is his abiding presence every day of their lives that when I remember God, I can make it through the pain. When I remember God, I can navigate through heartache. When I remember God, I can keep a smile on my face when I really feel like crying. When I remember God, I realize I still got a reason to praise his holy name. Ah, the question this morning is no matter what the circumstances of life have, have delivered to your doorstep, the question this morning is no matter the pain and the devastation that you and I have had to walk through, can you remember God? They may be in Babylon, beloved, but Babylon has no power over their God. They may have lost possessions, but possessions are not more valuable than having God in their life. The psalmist reminds us by the shift in this psalm that there comes a point, beloved, when you can't dwell any longer in singing the blues of life. No, you've got to sing the gospel good news that despite it all, God still reigns. How can you sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? Strange land of depression, strange land of death, strange land of enemy territory. How can you sing the songs of Zion in a strange land? The question I have for you this morning is simply how can you not? Because the only way to make it through whatever it is that we've got to go through is to remember that we serve a God who's been with us, who's traveling with us, who abides with us, who promised he'd be with us all of the way. Scripture says, don't ever let me forget that, God. That I'd rather lose the strength and the skill in my right hand. I'd rather never be able to part my lips to say another audible word if it comes at the expense of me remembering God. And this morning, my question for you, beloved, is can you remember God? 
greater than you can remember pain, greater than you can remember heartache, greater than you can remember disappointment. Can you remember God? And if you can, you won't let nothing stand in the way of your praise. The Psalter is filled with psalms for every season of life. The ascent and the valley experience. But what I've realized, having lived in the ascent and in the valley, that the one thing you ought never surrender is your praise. This morning, I come to you, beloved, to ask you, what are you really holding on to? Is it the pain? Is it the devastation? Is it the loss? Or is it your praise? Praise is our weapon. Praise can press us through a midnight hour. Praise lets God know that it's not the power of our captors. It's a God that has set, in fact, the captives free. My question for you this morning is, have you found your reason to rejoice? Come on, beloved, let's pull in close. I want to pray with you this morning. Our Father and our God, the giver of our song, Come, O oh God, interceding on behalf of someone, Lord Jesus, for whom the struggles of life have sabotaged and snatched their very song. Lord, I pray this morning as the sun shines through their window that you would remind them that if the world didn't give them their song, then the world has no power to take away their song. But our song is our hope in you, Jesus, that we don't live this life alone. So I pray, God, in a way that you would open up the door that someone has locked. And you would come inside and dwell within. That, God, you would take away the bitterness of pain and substitute it for your great joy. Lord, this is the prayer we pray for someone that stands in need. Help us never to forget our song, for our song is in Christ Jesus. To your name be the glory, the honor, and praise. Let all those that love the Lord say amen. This morning, that encouragement is for you, my brother. That encouragement is the welcome door for you, my sister that you've been sitting in a place outside for too long, the Lord says, I desire to dwell with you. I desire to abide in you. I desire to take you by the hand and lead you through what you cannot get through on your own. The question is, will you remember your song? Maybe you've never sung the song. It simply says, I want Jesus as my savior. Maybe you've never made that profession of faith. All you have to do is just reach out and say, Lord, I want to receive you into my heart. That no matter the journey in life, what God wants to know is will you allow him to be in the center of your life. If that's you this morning. Won't you reach out? The hands of welcome are extended to you. The heart of God is available to you. The doors of the church are open to you. Beloved, if and when, as you hear the Lord call you, reach out to us. Love lifts at heritagerestin.org. Say in the subject line, I want to make Jesus my song. It's as simple as that. We'll reach out to you. We'll walk the journey with you. We'll pray. We'll seek the Lord for answers together. But let the Lord have your complete heart and your soul. God bless you, beloved. We love you with the love of the Lord on this Sunday morning. The joy of the Lord is our strength. Join in with us next week as we continue to make his praise glorious.
Beloved, as this is the first Sunday of the month, the time when we set aside to observe one of the two ordinances of our faith, the first being believer's baptism, and this, the Lord's Supper. The Lord said to his disciples, Peter and John, in the gospel according to Luke, when you enter into the city, there shall a man meet you bearing a pitcher of water. Follow him into the house where he enters in, and you shall say unto the good man of the house, where is the guest chamber? And he shall show you a large upper room furnished. There, make ready. That at that, in that upper room, at that table, Jesus gathered with his disciples for the final meal, which would become the memorial meal, the Lord's Supper, that we engage, that we experience on this morning together. So come on, beloved, let's connect in prayer. Let's go to God and prepare for the Lord's Supper. Our Father and our God, we thank you, Lord Jesus, for the gift of salvation. We thank you, God, for loving us enough that while we were yet sinners, you, you died for us. And so on today, God, we ask that just as you have freely forgiven us, Lord, of all of our sins, that, Lord, you would help us to live a life worthy of being called your children. God, forgive us and help us to forgive others, Lord Jesus, who have sinned against us. This is our prayer. As we take this cup, as we, oh God, take this bread, let us do so in remembrance of you. To your name be all the glory, the honor, and praise. In Jesus' name, amen. Won't you join in with me as we affirm our faith together in the reading of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, creator of heaven and earth. I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord. He was conceived by the power of the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. On the third day, he rose again. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the church universal, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. For I have received of the Lord what I also handed on to you, that the Lord Jesus, on the night when he was betrayed, took a loaf of bread. In the same way, he took the cup also after supper, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Whoever therefore eats the bread or drinks the cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be answerable for the body and blood of the Lord. For all who eat and drink without discerning the body eat and drink judgment against themselves. But if we judge ourselves, we would not be judged. But when we are judged by the Lord, we are disciplined so that we may not be condemned along with the world. Won't you pray the Lord's Prayer with me? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The bread which we break is the communion of the body of Christ. This cup that we lift is the cup of blessing, which represents the blood of Christ. Come now, beloved, for all things are now made ready. Join in with me for a closing prayer. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Thank you, God, 
that the story doesn't end in death, but it ends in the newness of life. We pray, God, that as we have shared in the breaking of bread and the lifting of cup together on this day, that you would remind us that we are new in Christ Jesus. Old things are passed away. All things have become new. Help us to walk in your way, in your love, and in faith. Thank you, God, for what you did on Calvary's cross for a sinner like me. And help us, we pray, to lift high your praise on the earth as we one day shall do in heaven. This is our prayer, prayed in faith, sealed by the blood of Jesus for the remission of all of our sins. Let those that love the Lord say amen. Thank you for worshiping with us. We invite you to join us Wednesday at 7 p.m. for the Faith and Film series. Together, we will watch portions of Brian Stevenson's Just Mercy and discuss issues of race, theology, and how we can grow as a congregation. We'd love for you to join us daily for morning prayer. Also, subscribe to our YouTube channel and follow us on Facebook and Instagram. We look forward to engaging with you. Have a blessed week.